Okay, guys, this is going to be my review of a David Fincher film known as Gone Girl. I really enjoy this film. I think it's so unique because there's no real heroes and there's no real villains. It's just a film of a bunch of different perspectives. You know, you got the perspective of, of Nick, the perspective of Amy, the perspective of the, the investigation. And I think ultimately culminates this idea of, of kind of perspective and... and Everybody's coming from a different place. The media is coming from a different place than the investigators. Nick and Amy and I, and it's so complex and so interesting because it's no one's reliable. That's the truth. Is even though we're seeing the story in parts of it from Nick, parts of it from Amy. See, that's the thing. This film is not told from one person's perspective. It's told by a bunch of people's perspective. And I think that's what makes it unique. Where at parts we follow the investigators, at parts we follow Nick or Amy. And what's interesting is Amy's narrating the film, but we see a lot of sequences through the eyes of Nick and Amy. So it's kind of plays as very interesting because the first act we see it, we have first part, for the, for, for the first act of this film, it has narrations from Amy showing their past. And we're seeing it through Nick. So if mainly for the first act, we're seeing this story through Nick, where he's starting to unravel the idea that she's Amy's gone and going and we're helping with the investigators in the first act. But Ben Affleck plays it so well that you don't even know that he's innocent, where you kind of suspect he's innocent. But they don't. But Ben Affleck doesn't play it as if we all know. So it still leaves that room open for what if Ben Affleck did it? What if Nick did it? And then that twist, which happens at the end of the first act, you know, where ultimately Amy's, you know, still alive, who framed um, her, her essentially her death, or framed the idea that Nick did something. Ultimately, she, her plan was to hide and then eventually kill herself, looking like Nick did it. And then obviously chaos ensues. But um, what was so clever is kind of at the second half, it kind of... It's, at the second act, it kind of becomes two movies, or two halves of the same coin. You know what I mean? Where it becomes, the second half is split between showing Nick and Amy. And it's just so interesting because you see, when you dive deeper and deeper into the backstory, you see that they're both flawed. And you can see where both of them are coming from. At first. Because you see Amy. Amy just wants to have a life. Amy feels neglected abused by Nick, and you see Nick punching her, and, a, and pun pushing her, and you see Amy just feeling like she's worthless, this feel, f f this feeling of, um, of not feeling self-worth with being with Nick, but she felt trapped, she felt scared, that's why on Valentine's Day she tried to get by a gun, and I think diving into the past when it feels necessary in this film really helped it. Because we didn't know much about Amy or Nick going into this film. Obviously nothing. It's a new film. But, um, so we need to understand the relationship where it was before we understand where it's going. And I think that's where it's clever. But then by the end of the film, you realize not only... Then you realize Amy's a psychopath. And I think it, it, it has so much great me, um, themes about media. Because, again, part of the aspect of this film is, is perception. Perception is key. Because at the end of the day... Amy, who is a murderer, a psychopathic, self, uh, selfish murderer. But yet, because the media per, uh, perceives her as this sweetheart, that now she be looks to the world as the hero. So I think it's interesting seeing from this film from a different perspective. Because, like, I feel bad for Nick. Nick did bad stuff, but he's willing to change. Whereas Amy felt abused, felt neglected, was neglected, was abused, was harassed by Nick. But at the same time, she changed to be this psychopathic person that wants revenge. And at the end of the day, she, got, she in some ways got her revenge. Not the way she wanted. What she wanted was this idea of, of I'm going to frame that Nick had something to do with my disappearance. Go out, kill myself, frame it like it was Nick. But then when that unravels and, and the chaos and the craziness happens and all that stuff. So instead, she traps Nick by saying, number one, 
look how bad that looks for the media. Again, it comes down to the media. It comes down to perspective and point of view, which is what this film is dealing so much about. Perspective and point of view. Because when Amy came home, she acted like, oh, Nick's my savior. I love Nick so much. When secretly, when secretly they, both re- they both resented each other. Nick and you know Amy's relationship were toxic as ever. But because of the perspective, Nick filing a divorce against Amy after all she went through, or at least what everybody thought she went through, that she, she always throughout this whole film played the victim. This idea of she was abused, she was harassed, instead of her saying herself as a... She she never intentionally felt confident, you know what I mean? She never perceived herself as confident. She always perceived herself as lucky or as the victim, you know what I mean? And so, at the end of the day, how did she win? How did Amy win? Well, she won by trapping Nick in this loophole where Nick, no matter what he does, will become the bad guy. If Nick files a divorce, he's the bad guy. If he continues to cheat on Amy, he's the bad guy. And it's all about the perspective and the point of view. And so it's interesting because at the end of the day, Amy is villainous. Amy is awful. But it's so interesting because why? It's not the, yes, Amy killed people or killed a person. Yes, Amy framed Nick. Yes, Amy faked her disappearance. Yes, Amy lied to her parents, but the why. Why did she do those things? And you see that in in Nick, and you see that all of these characters are flawed. Nick's flawed. Amy's flawed. The parents are flawed. You know, um, 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 and even people that are not necessarily as flawed as you'd think, like a like a Mar like a Mar Margot. You know, Nick's sister you know, thrown into loop in, in the lawyer. And I think what's so, and the detectives and all that stuff. So what's interesting is how all these pieces kind of come together to the end of the day and the end of the realization that it's not about the investigation. It's not about where Amy went. It's about just the perspective and the point of view of the world. Because what who was the true winner was Amy. Not because Amy killed Nick, or not because Amy framed Nick and Nick went to prison, but because at the end of the day, Amy was was the hero. The hero of the world. The hero of the masses. When if you just look at it from the truth, it, it, it's more complex. And what's so interesting is, because this film is in many ways narrated by... Amy's journal entries, it's told from a perspective of the villain. And so it's told from a perspective of a person we can't fully trust. So for all we know, Nick didn't do any of those things. Didn't punch um, or push whatever um, Amy or did any of those things because it's told from a perspective of an unreliable resource. You know, similar to The Joker in the Dark Knight. The Joker talked about, oh, how he got his scars in the Dark Knight. It's a similar situation with this film because we're told from Amy. Amy, who is a liar, who is a deceiver. You know, and I think that's so interesting. I think that's interesting where it's... Where each act is so defined by the point of view of the film. Act 1. Point of view, we see the, the film through the lens of Nick. However, it's narrated by... Amy. So that's kind of the interesting thing about this film, is for some parts, especially the first act, for the film you see it through the eyes of Nick, but it's narrated through Amy's journal entries, which makes it interesting. And and Amy's journal entries are a gateway into flashbacks, which is a clever way to do flashbacks. So, um, which is interesting from the first act. In Act 2 is clearly defined by the plot twist that Amy framed everything. See, I think that, that sh- because the plot twist of Amy framing her own disappearance for Nick, to, to, pu- to frame that Nick had an involvement in Amy's disappearance, that showing that at the beginning of the second act proves that the film is not really about, you know, um, 
Amy miss going missing. I think the pr- the thing about this film, why it's called Gone Girl, is not because she physically went somewhere. It's because Amy, the amazing Amy, was gone. In this new Amy, this deceiving Amy, this deceptive, flying Amy, was now the Amy that was existed. Because through the entirety of the second and third act, we knew where Amy was and what she was doing. So the mystery was not, where's Amy? What did, what happened to her? No, we knew that pretty early on in the film, at the end of the first act. It's about, number one, Nick unraveling this. Nick getting out of this rabbit hole. Because whenever it's a case of someone framing someone else in any film or any in, in real life if someone frames me of 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 doing something like like that's the thing framing is so hard to get out of because when someone frames you it looks very obvious that it's you so it's so hard to get out of it so i think the kate it's it, this idea is nick versus amy at the core of it because yeah amy and nick don't really meet face to face until the third act but it's about nick going down this rabbit hole of framing and all that stuff to ultimately come out the other side um it's similar to an, another now another comparison to clone wars a season um five where when ahsoka ultimately left the jedi order ahsoka gets framed and framed and framed and it's so hard for ahsoka to prove her innocence so it, this film is crazy i could talk all, all day all day long about this film it's just crazy because Every time you think you know where the story is going, it unravels further because it unravels more about what the characters are doing next. Because these characters are not good characters, Nick's not a good character, nor is Amy. Because our two main characters are not good characters, or not, not, they're good characters, but not like good guys. Because our main characters are good guys and very complex and flawed characters, you never know what our characters are going to do next. So that, that's very interesting. Anyways, stay tuned for videos coming at you. And by the way, I really like Gone Girl. Um, it's it's one of the better David Fincher films. I still think Fight Club 7, Zodiac, and probably Social Network are probably better than this film. But I really enjoyed it. Stay tuned for videos coming at you.